So hello, I am going to do a video today using this heart frame that I got from Dollar Tree. So just a one dollar frame and we're going to be using some burlap and see if we can't make a nice Valentine's Day wreath. I've never used this frame before so this will be um, a new experiment for me so bear with me. The In addition to the frame you're going to need I'm guessing approximately five rolls of burlap, so I'm using white and pink, and I'm planning to alternate those. These are just regular size rolls of burlap, the five and a half inch uh, by 15 feet, and I just bought these at Walmart. Walmart is the only one I've found who has this nice pink color. So I've got three white and, pink, and two pink, and then a package of these zip ties. These are the smallest white zip ties from Harbor Freight. And my clippers from Harbor Freight that cut the zip ties. And you'll see how we're going to use those to adhere the burlap to the wreath frame. And then scissors, my fabric scissors, to cut the burlap. So let's give it a go. Okay, so we're going to first start with white. And the way I do this is I put the burlap underneath the wreath. I'm going to start on the side here and then you'll use um, either a, a pipe cleaner or a twist tie even. Um, I like to use these small zip ties that are quick and easy. So you're going to take this burlap right here so you can see it's under the innermost uh, rung here and I'm just going to fasten that in the middle and just flip that around, give it a nice pull, make it nice and tight, and then use my clippers to clip that end off. And then what you do is <clears throat> pull the burlap. You may want to pull this off a little bit to give yourself a little bit of slack to work with. Um, this burlap actually from Walmart is pretty stiff, um, which I like because it holds its shape better. So I just pulled this through to make a loop. And you can make it however big or small you want. If you make it too big, then it tends to flop over. So I'm just pulling it up, um, what's that about, inch, inch and a half there. And then pulling up another one in the next rung and having those kind of match up. So we've got two loops basically. Now what you do is you just shove it down as far as you can and then here's the tricky part to make it stay. You're going to take this here and twist and I normally twist twice to make sure it stays in place so twist again and then straighten this back out and go back up to the inside and start pulling another loop. It's not going to be perfect, that's okay. It's going to be hidden by these loops. The hardest part is getting it to getting that twist to work um, when it comes to this. So again through the top and through the bottom. And I've got a little too much, so I'm going to pull this one and then use that to pull the first one down. Again, they don't have to be perfect, but I want them to be pretty close to the same size. So then you just take that, slide it over again. As I've said before, I like my reeds pretty full, so I tend to shove it down on the um, rung as much as possible. So now we're going to twist and twist again. Get our burlap straightened out. Back up here for the next one. And this is kind of a slow process. You're just going to have to play around with it. It's not as fast as putting burlap on a work wreath, for example. But I love the dense um, style that these uh, loop wreaths uh, create. So just pull that in a little, go for my second rung, and 
slide it down and twist and twist again. So these little wreath frames end up using quite a bit of burlap. It may seem like a lot to pull out five rolls of burlap for something this tiny, um, but because of the sliding that you do to make it really thick, you end up using quite a bit of burlap. That was a surprise to me the first time that I did one of these. Uh, but I love the style, so get your burlap on sale, get a good deal, and these are totally worth it. All right, I'm going to slide that again. It's still not as full as I want it to be in terms of filling up this portion. So we're going to twist twist again and get it back up here. It's tricky holding everything in place, but just be patient with yourself and keep trying. I've undone more than one of these kinds of wreaths in learning how to do it. So periodically, um, you're going to have to kind of unroll. This gets twisted when you do the twist. So you're going to have to kind of uh, untangle that a little bit, unwind it, if you will, and just straighten it out here and, here and there. Okay, so there's my next one. Got those pretty well matched up. So now I'm going to take a look and see what I think if I stretch everything back out. So... I don't really like how loose it is right here, so I'm going to slide it down and get try to get one more in there. It gets to be pretty tight, but the good news is that holds it in pretty tight once it's done. So we're going to twist, twist again, back up to the top. <clears throat> It's a little tighter here, but like I said, it doesn't need to be perfect. The main thing is just making sure they're kind of the same height or length, however you want to look at it, um, just so that one's not a lot longer than the other. And then just really getting that wedged in there. It's tricky, but this is what we're looking like at the end here. So just pull that back a little bit. All right, so let's try that again see where we're at. I think that's probably as good as we're going to be able to do. If we shove that down, let's see, let's see if we can get another one in there. Alright, so twist twist again. Let's get one more in there. So you're just pulling it through until you find that side seam right there. It can get kind of tangled so you gotta pull that through. There's the other end and push that through here. Dig that end out a little. really kind of have to wrestle it as you go along, but like I said, these are so nice and fluffy and full, and I think they're worth it. Okay, so let's see, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Looks like eight in that first section. Okay, so now we're going to flip this over. We're on the back side now and take another one of our little zip ties here and you're just going to come from underneath and 
just going to adhere that burlap. So I'm just looping it around back through. So I'm back on the back here. I got my twist ties backwards, so let's rotate that. And then get that on there nice and tight. Cinch it up. Clip it off. And then we're taking the fabric scissors and chopping that off. So we'll set our white burlap aside for now and we will move on to some pink. I like to use these um, little ties, actually, the um, twine or jute, I'm not sure, um, but they go around the burlap to hold it together. And I actually save those and use them um, for a number of different things. But the main one is to put my business card on the back of my wreath. So I punch a hole in the corner of my business card, tie that jute through, and find a place on the wreath to attach it. Not at the top or where you might hang it, um, but just out of the way somewhere so that when somebody is ready for a new one, they just flip it over and they can see uh, all my contact information and then let me know what they want me to do next. So some of these, as you can see, this is not perfect. So these are a lot fatter and fluffier than these down here that I started with. So you can kind of work on that um, and pull some through and make some fluffier and then take some down a notch. And then you can always kind of just shove it in. And we'll do a lot of that uh, at the end to make sure it's looking the way we want. So now we're back to a zip tie. We've got a new color here, so <clears throat> let's see how this is going to turn out. White, pink, white, pink, white, pink. Perfect. Probably should have checked that first. Okay, so find the middle of your burlap here, and that's the middle of the roll piece, and we're just going to get our zip tie oriented the right way. Just attach that. Oops. All right, give it a nice pull. Get that end off. All right, now we're back in business. So let's pull that pink through our first loop. Second one. Get our slack here. Alright, so there's our first set. So remember, we slide that down. We take our bunch here, twist, and twist again. And back up through the inner ring.
So there's our heart. And let's see about getting a bow on it, maybe. This is uh, part of the, it's a ribbon from the Robert Stanley collection. This is a Hobby Lobby ribbon. Um, $7 a roll. Of course, you always wait until ribbon goes on half off every other week and buy it that way. And if not, there's always a 40% off coupon on HobbyLobby.com or on the app if you use that. This one, for some reason, was on clearance for $1.42. I think I bought two or three rolls of it. Not sure why it was um, on clearance, but I snagged. And then we've got to make our tail. So some people like to just go ahead and tie this off and then do the tail separately. I like to do it all in one, save a little time. So we're back, we're at the end here. We're going to twist again, just like we were going to make another loop. Only we're going to pull some out and make a bigger loop. So this is the tail. These will be the tails. And we're just turning this into a round. You can see the bows at the top just looping this around and just have to decide how big I want the tails to be. It's always better to go too long than too short because if it's too long you can always cut them down but if it's too short you are stuck. Okay so now what I like to do here is I'm holding this all together. I like to get one of the bigger zip ties so this isn't the absolute largest, but it's kind of the middle one. This is the most popular one, I think. Um, and I'm going to feed that through. So I want to make sure that it's on this little piece that I was holding down. Make sure it's squarely on that. Come around, and I'm going through my loop here. Feed that in and then pull it as tight as I can. Cinch it up as much as possible. Okay, so we've got a nice tight hold. And we'll flip that off, of course. And then we need to get, we need to detach this roll of ribbon so we're going to go underneath here, so you can see where it's still attached here. Go underneath here, move this out of the way so we don't cut that, maybe. And then 
cut that as close to that zip tie as possible. Move that out of the way. Then to make the tails, I pull it up, pull the pull the ribbon at the bottom and pull that up. Follow that. That's the midpoint. So then I cut that and then cut the tails. So you can do them slanted. For the bigger, thicker ribbons like this, I like to do the V cut or the chevron tail. Uh, it just seems to lay nicer when it's a big ribbon, it doesn't curl. So we're just gonna cut that off. So what I did is I took the ribbon, fold it in half, match that up. So it's folded in half. And then from the inside of the ribbon out, so my outer edge is over here, inside out, just cut at an angle. All right, so now to attach the ribbon, I get another zip tie. So this is that medium length again. And I feed it through the zip tie that's on here. So usually, I make them really tight to hold the ribbon, so you got to kind of finagle that in there. But usually the best spot to go in is right at the seam of the zip tie that you just closed. So we're just going to wedge that in there. Oops, I don't want to stab that. Okay, so you've got... Just midway through and then okay so I just ran the zip tie through the burlap there and I'm just gonna grab the other end feed that wiggle that through there and before I tie it off let's just make sure we are reasonably happy here with the way this is going to look before we lock that into place. So I think that's going to be cute. Let's give it a go. Get that nice and tight. So that's just held on through the burlap and then attached. You got to have a an attaching point there to hold it upright because otherwise if you just attach it to the fabric it'll flop forward so you want to make sure you have an anchor point there nice and tight that clipped off and now it's just a matter of staging it so we want to pull our ribbons down our tails ribbon tails down get those laying the way we want and there we drop our bow up here get our center oriented correctly and there we go I think they're a little long for my taste so I'm gonna fold them back the way they were so see there's my angle and just take off an inch and a half and then I'm going to bow down this one so just cut those ends off a little bit there we go that looks better so we just fluff that up the way we want it angle that and there we go there is our finished product let's get a better view here so, I'm going to turn it this way, and we'll just fluff this white out a little bit here, and over here, 
pink is a little softer than the white. The white is stiffer, so it's not fluffing as much as nicely. So be mindful of that. You may have to make your loops a little longer when you're using the white, at least in this particular brand. All right, so there we go. That is our burlap heart wreath, and that is using the Dollar Tree heart frame. So, hope you guys enjoyed this. Pretty inexpensive. Um, we did only end up using four rolls, and not even that, but I have one full roll of white left, and then a partial roll of white, and a partial roll of pink. So, didn't even use four whole rolls. And those, that burlap is about $3.50 uh, each roll at Walmart. So we've got that and then the dollar frame and then this ribbon. Um, usually I charge a couple bucks for my bows, you know, at this size, maybe three, four dollars. And then as they get bigger, uh, charge more for that. So we've got um, a nice wreath here for under 20 bucks. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Be sure to subscribe and make sure you stay up to date on all the posts of all the crafts that we'll be doing. And let me know if there's something you'd like to see. Or if you have a question, just shoot that to me in the comments. Thanks for watching.